welcome to the Recovering Collector here on New Toy Robot. See how fancy we got? That new little intro and a <laughs> little intro happening. Uh, I'm Michael Jason Francis. Thank you once again for coming back to the Recovering Collector. Um, in 1990, ABC greenlit basically Twin Peaks as an eight episode mid season replacement for the Thursday night lineup. That was a difficult thing to say. Uh, for their Thursday night lineup. Uh, <laughs> I remember watching Twin Peaks, and when you watch the first episode, it seems odd. It seems odd, but basically, it was pretty much your average noir kind of whodunit kind of a show. At least the pilot seemed that way. Um, Daddy Love, hi, welcome. The new op opening looks great. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so Twin Peaks, first episode, it was kind of just like, okay, this is cool. We're going to check this out. As it kept progressing, you start to realize how, one, cinematic it was for a TV show. Let me back up a little bit. So <clears throat> David Lynch, uh, who was nominated for Academy Award for Elephant Man, had just come off of a real disappointing <laughs> trip of a movie called Dune. Uh, basically what happened is David Lynch... Uh, I think it was Dino, Dino De Laurentiis was producing it. And Dino De Laurentiis was just like, here, if you make, make this movie for me, and then afterwards you can do whatever, whatever type of film you want to do afterwards, but you just need to do this one. Um, basically with Dune, and David Lynch had no idea what Dune was. He did read the book after and was like excited about it. But basically what the deal that David Lynch made with Dino De Laurentiis was basically, and it's probably the worst thing you do if you're a creative director, uh, which most people are, is that when he made this deal, the studio and producers had basically the final edit of the film. So whatever David Lynch was producing, afterwards he had to hand it over to them. So does that mean that Dune could have been a better film? I mean, look, it looked amazing. It had a really, it was very, it was trippy. It was interesting, but it didn't make much sense. Um, there is a, a director's version or a, a four hour version of Dune that's out there. I personally myself haven't seen it yet. Um, I do want to see it because the more I was doing some research about uh, Twin Peaks, uh, I got more interested. Um, but, um, so I, I don't know, but the results of that gave David Lynch the opportunity to make Blue Velvet. Um, and if you've seen Blue Velvet, you realize it's a, it, it, it turned out better. I mean, it, it shocked a lot of people, but it turned out better than Dune did. Uh, during this time also, a gentleman by the name of Mark Frost, uh, who was like an Emmy winner for, uh, I think it was Hill Street Blues or something like that, who was living in the world of TV, uh, they met, uh, he met David Lynch. And basically, the two of them, so here you have a cinematic director, and then you also have uh, released the Whedon Cut. Hi, Hatter! <laughs> there is no Whedon Cut. There's no Whedon Cut of Dune. Hi, Hatter, welcome to the show. Um, so basically, um, <laughs> uh, you have Mark Frost, who's this huge television person, and then you have David Lynch, who's this huge cinematic person. And the two get together to start putting together a show, um, which is Twin Peaks. So this was, like I said, uh, 1990, I, I think it was 1986 when they, the, the two of them actually first met. Um, and they actually tried putting together some plans and doing some type of sci-fi movie together. But during, I think after Dune or something like that, Dino De Laurentiis, his production company, went into chapter 11. And so basically everything just fell apart. Uh, so they never got to make that film, but they were David Lynch and him were talking about making this TV show. Uh, so basically, in April 8th, April 8th, uh, there was a two-hour pilot that aired on Channel 7, um, and people just went nuts. Um, the show was, Twin Peaks was nominated for like 13 Emmys and won three Golden Globes, including Best Drama. Um, and, <laughs> okay, so basically the show ended, okay, the show's premise. Now, nobody in the chat, nobody who's watching this or participating in this, I don't want anybody to say uh the 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 ending not the ending but who killed laura palmer i don't want anyone to mention it. i want this to be an experience where somebody can go like oh my god this show sounds totally cool i'm gonna watch it and i want them to have the same experience as everyone else did as they were watching it so nobody out there please everyone uh nobody uh say who killed laura palmer that being said 
the show revolves around uh, a young girl uh, who was found dead, wrapped in plastic, uh, named Laura Palmer. Uh, Twin Peaks is this kind of like the suburb, small town kind of a thing. And um, for this to have, Laura Palmer was like basically the good girl that uh, everybody wanted their daughters to be or they wanted their sons to date. Um, she was popular. She was smart. She was doing good in classes. Um, and she's found dead. So the show revolves around that. But what was so great about Twin Peaks is, yeah, that was kind of like the building block of the show. But there was like 21, 22 characters that were part of this show. And they were some interesting characters from a woman who would carry a log called the Log Lady to the bad boy Bobby and to the I don't want to say he was like a, a James Dean ripoff, but he was very much like a James Dean ripoff uh, who was Laura's secret lover. And I just blanked on his name. <laughs> I'll remember it. I'll remember it. Um, so, yeah, and it just had this huge cast of characters. So once the first season, once the first season wrapped up, everyone was in love with it. It ended with nobody knowing who killed Laura Palmer. It actually ended with a cliffhanger, which I'm not going to tell you about because I want you to watch the show. Um, and I know that it's been like 27 years since the show stopped or whatever like that. But still. I don't want anybody to know all that. I want people to watch it. I want to, this, this the, the episode I'm doing here is for you to go after this and go like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. I'm going to go watch Twin Peaks. I'm trying not to give you any spoilers. It started with Laura Palmer being dead. So there you go. It just starts that way. Um, <laughs> but it ended without nobody, nobody knew at the end of the show who killed Laura Palmer and it ended on a crazy cliffhanger. Um, now, I always like to discuss the year that a show or an item was around. Uh, so since it's 1990, I want to get back into it. I want to tell you about a bit about that before we start talking more about Twin Peaks and also about these Funko Pops. Um, 1990 was a crazy kind of year. Um, for one thing, a Furby came out. <laughs> 1990 is when a Furby first came out, uh, which I thought for some reason that was a lot later. Furby was the uh, the weirder version of Teddy, Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, and it didn't have a an actual audio cassette tape. It just was digital. Um, but so a couple things that happened uh, is basically Iraq, the invasion of, Ku of Kuwait. So if you remember all this in 1990, Iraq invaded Kuwait and uh, you, basically Desert Shield begins. Desert Shield was before Desert Storm. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, basically, the United States and the UK sent troops to Kuwait. Um, I am once again using the, the peoplehistory.com, which is not affiliated with this, but I just really dig it. Um, also, the cost of living for 1990. Uh, basically, the average cost of a new house, not lived in, was $123,000. Still, I guess, manageable. Uh, monthly rent was like $465. It's getting a little higher, but, you know, not, not too bad. Gallon of gas was $1.34, which, if you've been buying gas lately, is like would be a godsend if that was true uh still and uh an isuzu rodeo if you don't know what a suzu a suzu is a suzu yeah yeah <laughs> it's a car <laughs> look it up uh that costs twelve thousand dollars um and ibm's uh an ibm computer an ibm ps1 computer was uh 999 dollars to almost two thousand dollars so the price of computers were still pretty high even for now i mean you can get a laptop for pretty cheap but Anyways, um, and where was, uh, there we go. Hold on. There was some other crazy stuff that I wanted to, oh, 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 oh. So basically in Switzerland, the World Wide Web uh, basically kind of, uh, it was a proposal for it. So when uh, it says here, hold on, uh, a system that would use hypertext, web pages, browsers, and web servers to share documents across the internet. Ooh, so that was in 1990. So all this is thankful to that. Um, by all this, I mean the internet. <laughs> oh, and the Hubble Space uh, Telescope. Uh, the Discovery, the shuttle of Discovery, uh, took it up there. What was so cool about the Hubble Space Telescope is it was basically the first kind of like satellite telescope in space that could be repaired. A lot of things we sent out and we're like, there you go. Whoop, enjoy the universe. Uh, but the Hubble Space uh, Telescope, we were actually able to, uh, uh, was the first telescope to be put in orbit that could be repaired by astronauts when maintenance needed. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the selling point of the internet pitch was cat photos. 100%. 100%. Uh, 
uh, basically what it was, it was in Sweden, they were all in a room and you know that hang in their cat poster, I think I mentioned it many times. Uh, someone said like, what if everyone could have that in their living room? Not on their wall, but on an expensive computer. <laughs> um, let's see here, uh, Saddam Hussein orders the Iraq invasion. Um, oh, the car, speaking of cars, the Saturn brand of cars um, was launched by GM in 1990. Um, oh, and the most complex skeleton of a T-Rex was found in South Dakota. So basically, this was like the most, the most bones, I guess, <laughs> the thing that looked more like a T-Rex. I don't know, it was found in South Dakota in the 1990s. Um, let's see. Oh, and it was called Sue. They named it Sue the T-Rex. Well, there you go. Uh, remove Sue. They removed Sue from a bluff where she was discovered. Hmm, okay. Chicago's Field Museum eventually purchased the specimen for eight million dollars. <laughs> so Dr. Hammond, all those people in Jurassic Park when they were looking for bones and stuff like that, apparently they make a ton of money off of it. Uh, I think it was the most com complete skeleton. Yes, exactly, Dalila. Um, let's see. Oh, The Simpsons. The, the Simpsons first aired on Fox for the first time in 1990, and it's 2021, and it, the show's still on. How crazy is that? What, 31 years? Oh, God. I remember when it first came on. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, and the U.S. enters a major recession in 1990. Uh, bu 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 oh, the ban of the trade of ivory in the 1990s, so no more trading with I of ivory. Uh, although, you know, poachers, that stuff still happens, but now this was an official ban on the trade of ivory. Um, and I want to get to, hold on, uh, basically the pop culture stuff. Hold on. Uh, here we go. The Sci-Fi Channel. The Sci-Fi Channel uh, starts, transmis starts transmitting in 1990. Uh, the only time I ever watched the Sci-Fi Channel was when Battlestar Galactica came on. Not the old version, but the, the new one. Um, that was really the only time I really ever watched the Sci-Fi Channel. And I feel like Battlestar was only on for like a year and then it got canceled and ended up going somewhere else. Um, or maybe it went to sci-fi. I don't remember. Um, oh, okay. Well, yeah, Twin Peaks premieres on ABC. Here, here's this. Uh, is that still a channel? I think it's still a channel. Um, Millie Vanilli. Do you guys remember Millie Vanilli? Girl, you know it's true. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I love you. I think that's Millie Vanilli. Anyways, uh, the, the the duo's producer reveals that the Grammy women pop duo were lip singing the songs on the album, which gains what gains them the award. Um, so they won a Grammy, and I, apparently it turns out they were lip singing the whole time. Uh, Daddy Love, oh God. Sci fi became, uh, yeah, sci fi became mostly wrestling hatter. I was like, what is that? What happened to that? That was weird. That's right. Um, yeah, I didn't understand that. Sci fi people out there, why in the world would you put wrestling on? He didn't even have them dress up. Like, it would be cool if they were wrestling dressed as Cylons or those lizards from B. That would have been cool. I would have been all over that. Um, so here's the popular, basically the popular films. Home Alone, Ghost, Dances with Wolves, Pretty Woman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Jim Henson version, uh, The Hunt for October, Total Recall, Die Hard 2, Dick Tracy, and a movie I just actually bought on Blu-ray because for some reason apparently I don't own it or I can't find it anymore. Edward Scissorhands, and then uh, Godfather Part 3, which was kind of a train wreck. And I guess there's a new version of Godfather Part 3 um, that uh, is supposedly better. Uh, I guess they re they tweaked it and fixed it or something like that. And I don't know. <laughs> I didn't try and watch it. I thought about it for two seconds, but I wasn't a huge fan of the Godfather films. Uh, popular musicians, Tears for Fears, Kylie Minogue, Janet Jackson, John Bon Jovi for Blaze of Glory, which means Young Guns 2 should have been in that list of popular films. Or, well, maybe it wasn't a popular film. It was with me and my friends, um, <laughs> Rod Stewart, Depeche Mode, the Blues Brothers. Popular music, the Blues Brothers in 1990. That's interesting, because Belushi was dead by then and they weren't performing anymore. That's crazy. I'm going to have to look that up. I wonder how true that is. Oh, Vanilla Ice. So the 90s were a crazy time. Vanilla Ice with Ice Ice Baby. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, so <laughs> that's your trip down memory lane of 1990. So, um, I was going through this, which is a very cool book, Twin Peaks Behind the Scenes. This is like the unofficial version. I don't think you can get it anymore. It came out in 1990. 
uh, kind of flipping through this, it talks about all the different things behind the scenes, uh, stuff that was happening on Twin Peaks. Uh, but one, what I, was, I thought was really interesting was that so when so season two came around, everyone was excited because they were waiting for they're waiting for the show to start back up. Uh, there was I told you there was a cliffhanger at the end, which I'm not going to talk about. And plus, they still don't know who killed Laura Palmer. So everybody is waiting, anticipating for season two. The problem with season two, and I don't even remember if I, I think I dropped out too. A lot of, it, it started losing viewers, which sometimes happens. Uh, but the problem with season two is that David Lynch kind of stepped away from the show. Um, the only thing I really heard him say is that he regretted the fact that he wasn't more hands-on with season two. Um, but basically he stepped away from the show and you could tell, um, you could really tell because it just lost, it, it was all, it was so all over the place and David Lynch is pretty out there, but it was like really out there. Um, and just all, not really out there, but just all over the place. And so ABC there, everything's falling apart. Basically nobody's really watching the show. There's some people, some diehard people that are watching it and ABC was just like, look, you have to say who killed Laura Palmer. Uh, wait, you're on and I'm able to watch it for you. <laughs> Hi, welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. We're talking about Twin Peaks. I hope you watch the show. Um, uh, uh, so basically, ABC is like, look, you have to say, you need to say who killed Laura Palmer. We need to get these viewers in here. So basically, they start promoting that on episode seven of season two, ABC, basically Twin Peaks is going to let you know who killed Laura Palmer. And I mean, this is like a, a studio. ABC went to Lynch and Mark Frost and just said, you have to do this. And so they start promoting this. There's ads saying like on November, I think it was, yeah, I think it was like November, November 10th, Saturday, November 10th, 1991. We are going to tell you who killed Laura Palmer. And I'm not going to tell you, I told you, no spoilers. I want you to watch this show because if you haven't watched it, you should watch it. Um, but they were promoting this so they can get their viewers. And the viewers got it and they got the, the shocking news and blah, blah, blah. But it, it didn't save the show. So that, so it could be many things besides David Lynch walking away. It could be the fact that it was, they ordered 22 episodes. You know, that's a lot for a show like Twin Peaks who had a pretty strong first season because it had eight ep episodes. 22 episodes to fill is rough, you know, and if you watch, if you go back and watch your favorite shows, there's a couple episodes that, you know, are just filler and you don't care. Um, so, <laughs> so towards the end, I think it's the, the season finale of season two. The show is getting canceled. David Lynch showed up. David Lynch showed up on the David Letterman show. And he was like, I want you, I need the fans out there. And he asked David Letterman, he's like, can I give you, give out this information? Contact Bob Iger who was in charge of ABC back then, uh, not Disney, but ABC. Well, eventually ABC became, never mind. Uh, Bob Iger, contact Bob Iger and tried to save the show. David Lynch even directed the final episode, but it was too late. No one cared. The show was gone. Okay. It ended with another big cliffhanger. <laughs> the show is all about the cliffhanger. See, what's so good about now is you can catch up. You can watch all this. Okay. You can watch, you can see the cliffhangers and get right to it. We had to wait. We had to wait, you know? Um, and I was done with the show, so I didn't even know there was a cliffhanger until I forgot when it was when I decided to try and rewatch it. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it ended that way. Um, but we all had to wait. Uh, so now you can watch it. And people for the longest time were like, what's going to happen? Are we going to get any more Twin Peaks? Um, and in season, I think it's season two, there's an episode where Laura Palmer says in the dream sequence to Kyle McLaughlin, uh, to D Agent Dale Cooper, says, in 25 years, you'll see me again. And son of a gun, 25 years later, David Lynch is like, I've made a third season. So he gets, ho he hooked up with Showtime and he makes the third season of Twin Peaks, 25 years later. I don't know if it was his plan. It was brilliant if it was his plan, regardless, 25 years later, there's a season three and season three is nuts. <laughs> it's darker and just more effed up than the rest of the seasons. I think it's brilliant. It's great. Uh, but it was, it was pretty crazy. So there you go. That's a little rundown of uh, Twin Peaks. 
Um, I could tell you more about it. I really just want you to watch the show. Maybe I'll do another Twin Peaks thing, uh, another Twin Peaks episode where we can really all talk about it. I'll do it months from now, not 25 years from now, but like months from now. So you guys can all watch it now and we have uh, a huge conversation about it. Uh, so let's get into the unboxing here. Uh, I have my Funko Pops. Do do do, Vage and Dale Cooper and Laura Palmer that I will be unboxing. Uh, but there's one thing that I have that I want to show you that just cracks me up. So this is awesome. This is a little bit of awesome right here. Uh, this is uh, Twin Peaks. This is an audio version. Uh, here we, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the back. It says, "Re-experience the mystery of Twin Peaks in an all new way." The Cooper tapes, the private world of Special Agent Dale Cooper. Previous reserved for one woman, Diane, uh, including notes and stories never revealed on television from the man in the black suit, Twin Peaks, in his own words. Um, so what's very cool. Yeah, thanks, Christy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll schedule in a meeting for 25 years. That'll be perfect. Um, so what's really cool about this is, yeah, there's a bunch of unreleased stuff on here. And Kyle McLaughlin actually went in and re-recorded to do these. I wish there was a digital version of this. This, no joke, is an audio tape. It's literally tapes. Um, I'm sure I could probably transfer it, but I'm too scared to destroy it. Because um, tapes, they have a way of just getting eaten by tape decks. Uh, one of the lines on the back is, Diane, a small town is not unlike a river. Lots of hidden currents and, and eddies, each holding its own secrets. My guess is that I haven't even broken the surface yet. Oh, one more thing, Diane. Never drink coffee that has been anywhere near a fish. Twin Peaks was funny too. Um, what's even funnier about this is I'm looking at it and I'm realizing this is one of those books that you can, re that you can rent. And I'm like, oh my God, why do I have this? How did I get it? When I open up inside, you can't see it, but right here is the barcode for the warehouse. The warehouse, if you don't know what it is, was a music and video store. I don't think I ever returned this. I don't know if this is even mine. I I don't know. Um, but yeah, so here, if you can find it or if there's a digital version of this, let me know. If you're on YouTube watching this, um, first subscribe to New Toy Robot on YouTube. But leave in the comments if there's a digital version of this. Because um, I don't want to ruin this one if this is all that I have. Uh, I listened to it once and it was amazing. Maybe I listened to it twice. And then of course this very cool book. Uh, so let's start opening up. Uh, I'm gonna leave this right here with the nice glare from the lights here, I'll put it over here. Uh, so first up, I'm gonna open up uh, Dale Cooper, uh, The Warehouse. Wow, <laughs> haven't heard that in a bit. Yeah, man, I miss that place. I mean, I mean, yeah, they did that la last bo uh, blockbuster documentary, but I wish they did one about the warehouse because warehouse was really cool because they would actually the one over the OK, there was a Hollywood warehouse on Sunset, which was pretty cool. But the, the one over on on, uh, on La Cienega in the Beverly Connection, that one was amazing uh, because they would actually have live performances in there. Like, yeah. So there should be a whole documentary on the warehouse. Yeah, yeah. Tower Records. That was great, too. But the warehouse. Um, so I'm going to open up Dale Cooper here, um, who has got his little cup of coffee and he's doing his little thumbs up. Uh, let me just see if it's got anything here on the back. There are other figures, which I haven't got. So um, there's a Laura Palmer, which I'll be opening. There's also uh, uh, Audrey, uh, who was Cheryl and Finn, uh, the log lady, Leland Palmer, the giant. The giant shows up in season two. There's a little spoiler. Because if you, if you needed some incentive to watch season two, there's a giant in it. Um, I wish they had like Bobby and uh, a couple of the other characters on here. I don't know if they're going to make any more of these Funkos. Um, but let's open up Dale Cooper. Um, it's, oh man, season three. I'm just remembering what I like. So Dale Cooper, what I liked about him. So he's an FBI, FBI agent, but he was very clean cut. You know, he's very clean cut. Uh, relied on his intuition, followed his dreams, uh, what his dreams told him. Not just, well, maybe he wanted, he dreamed of being uh, an FBI agent, FBI agent. But one of the lines I remember him saying was he was talking to uh, Harry S. Truman, who was actually here, this, this character here, uh, one of the cops in it, the local cop there. And he said, you know what you should do, Harry? Every, every day, give yourself a present. 
And basically, Dale Cooper's present was a cup of coffee. Um, there was a, <laughs> he also liked cherry pie, but you know, uh, that's something completely different. Diane, the tapes of Dale Cooper is on Audible. Ooh, Hatter, thank you. Oh, yay. Do you hear that? You're safe now. I can enclose you in plastic and keep you forever. Well, you are enclosed in plastic, but <laughs> thanks, Hatter. Uh, so here we go. Agent Dale Cooper. Um, he looks awesome. He's really cool. He's not a bobblehead, which is fine. I don't like the bobbleheads. Um, but check him out. Look at that. Uh, he's just such a great character. Dale Cooper is one of those great iconic characters where there's something very noir about him. Uh, but he's, it's almost like he's lost in time. All the FBI agents in Twin Peak are, are kind of quirky. Uh, but Co Dale Cooper is just, he was just a good guy. You know, he was just really, he's just a good person. Uh, isn't that cast from Supernatural? Hatter, I swear to God. <laughs> no. If Cass looks like him. <laughs> Katie Christine, don't, don't, don't encourage him. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, so anyways, he was just such a great, likable character. And when you see him in season three, oh my gosh, it is just, for one thing, Kyle McLaughlin barely ages. So there's that. Uh, but uh, so here's Agent Dale Cooper. And he's just really, really cool. The detail on him, the, just he looks good. He just looks really good. And this makes me want to get all the other Twin Peaks characters. Uh, Funko, I do. I've been collecting a lot more Funko than I thought I would. For some reason, when Funko first came out, because Funko, here, fun, here's a little fun fact. The Funko Pops actually started at Sparky's, which is a place at Universal City Walk. Now it's just a place where you get donuts, those little crummy little donuts. But Funko actually started at City Walk at Sparky's. And, and I was there for that. <laughs> I'm old. Doesn't matter. Anyway, um, so when Funko came about, I wasn't like a huge, huge fan of them. Uh, but then, so I got a Funko Pop from one of my jobs. It was a, it was a Walking Dead Funko Pop. And I, after then, I was just like, okay, I need to, there's some things I need to collect. And now I've been collecting them. It hasn't been too bad. It hasn't been too bad. Um, but things like this or Blade Runner, you know, um, yeah, you know, it, the mainstream stuff, I don't get so much. I'm looking at my stuff right now. Oh, that's not true. Jaws, does that count? I don't know. It's a big shark. It was cool. Uh, so here's the Agent Dale Cooper. I'm going to put him right here. Uh, and he's got coffee in his coffee cup. Uh, now this one, once you pop, it don't stop. <laughs> You're just saying that because you work there. No, it's true. They're so addicting. Now this one... This one, um, oh man, I, I this one weirds me out. So this is how they found Laura, Laura Palmer, uh, basically t wrapped up in plastic. Her body was found on by the lake wrapped up in plastic. So this Funko Pop kind of, I, I'm not usually disturbed by Funko Pops, but this one's kind of disturbing. Uh, so this is going to be a little interesting. Let me see if there's anything different on the back. Uh, no. Uh, no, no, there's nothing. Just a bunch of cool little squiggles and stuff, uh, which I think is on the other one. So here we go. Uh, I, have, <laughs> I have too many more because of that. Yeah. Oh, 100%. I, I, my, one, of like, one of my first jobs was working at Sam Goody uh, Suncoast, which was a music place and a video, video store, I guess, that you can purchase stuff. And yeah, most of my paychecks went to, went to that. Um, okay, here we go. Put these aside. Oh God. Okay, so so they made the dead body all cute and stuff, cute looking for a dead body, you know, Funko style. Sorry, Funko style. Um, oh man, this is so disturbing. Uh, it's got a little stand, and and the plastic bags opened up. There's a there's there's a lot of detail uh, if you can see from this Funko Pop. Uh, it's got like the bits of sand on her face and I, yeah, it's, this is, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why this one really wigs me out. So here's the dead Laura Palmer. has got a stand. Uh, I can't help but to feel bad about this. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. I didn't even realize this. It's the beach, the rocky beach that she that they were laying on when they were found, is in here. What did wait? Did 
hold on. Let me see if Agent Dale Cooper had one. So basically, this was the show, and this was how he was found. Oh, that's disturbing. Okay, um, here we go. It's funny the horror. There's horror figures out there. Funko's got horror figures. You know, Freddy Krueger, all the all, all of them. Like just across the board, there's tons of them, and none of them ever freak me out. Um, but this one really kind of this one. I don't know. This really freaks me out. Uh, KT Christine, do, uh, is there like a Funko Pop that freaks you out or one that you haven't bought yet? I mean, you're surrounded by tons of them, but like I know you have that whole horror section at that shop. Um, but is there anything that like freaks you out the most? If you're still there, if you're still on, um, let me see if Dale Cooper's got a background. I guess he doesn't, or did I drop it? No, he doesn't have a background. So it's just it's just Laura Palmer's got that background. Um, so that's that's a mess, and it's weird. It's got the stand, so so they can stand up like so. So there they go. Um, Agent Dale Cooper and Laura, and Laura Palmer. Uh, it's such a the show. Okay, so one thing I didn't mention, but I'll mention it now. Uh, in between. Basic, well, after season two, there was no in between because we didn't know there was going to be a season three. So basically, after season two, there was finally a Twin Peaks movie. Now, everyone got super excited about the Twin Peaks movie because they were like, okay, we could finally, like I said, season two ended with a cliffhanger. So they were going to find out some more information about that. But what David Lynch did is he actually made a prequel about. Laura Palmer and the events that led to her demise. Uh, if I the first time I watched it, uh, I, I watched it once. It, I had I think I had a couple people over. We watched it once, and then we immediately watched it again. Uh, the film is terrifying. Uh, maybe other people have seen it; and they don't find it terrifying. I find it terrifying. It's disturbing. It's really good. There is. There was apparently a version of it. There was two versions of it. There was the theatrical release, and then there was another version that had a bunch of stuff that was cut out to make it, you know, time acceptable for audiences in the movie theater. Uh, so there was uh, basically another version. And if you buy the Criterion of Firewalk with me, you get in the extras all the scenes that were cut out, but they're not in the movie. Uh, which is very disappointing. But I think there was one at one point, which is probably worth a lot of money right now, a uh, Blu-ray of it that had it all put together. But so Fire Walk with me show, basically showed you all the events that led to uh, Laura Palmer's demise. And um, it's really interesting. It's it, it fits and makes sense why season three is so dark uh, after you watch Fire Walk with me. But uh, yeah. Uh, so definitely start with the first season of Twin Peaks. You will definitely want to continue uh, for season two, just because you want to see what happens at the cliffhanger. If you make it through all of season two, which you should, because the cliffhanger, the last episode that David Lynch uh, did for it is really good. Uh, and then watch Firewalk with me if you can. You don't have to watch Firewalk with me. You can jump right to season three of um, Twin Peaks, but Firewalk with me, I think we'll prepare you for it. I just want to go into this book real quick. Um, it's so interesting because it, it was such a sensation uh, that the, the first season was that um, oh here we go hold on uh, it, it, one of the things that was so great it, it wasn't shot in Los Angeles you know uh, it was shot up in Washington uh, here we go a, a logging town 25 miles east of Seattle the exteriors which have since reappeared in voluminous stock footage uh, the series makes use of were shot at the uh, Salish Lodge, a huge, huge resort overlooking a 268-foot waterfall. The, the, I, when I said earlier that it's cinematic uh, for a TV show, it is cinematic for a TV show. Back in the night, like nowadays, you everybody is jumping onto television to have stuff. Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, everyone has their TV shows. But for the 90s, that wasn't like a really big thing. I mean, yeah, there was kind of like Steven Spielberg presents amazing stories, but you didn't really hear of like an Oscar winning director going into this. So like I said, when I said cinematic, I mean, it is cinematic. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to look at. Um, uh, and this was like, it was just the great Northern hotel. It, it, it was took that one uh, lodge was basically the great Northern hotel owned by Ben Horn from the show. Um, 
it's it's just it's incredible it's it's a it's a beautiful beautiful show um it's crazy uh the music too uh i'm going to talk a little bit about the music before we wrap up but the music for twin peaks the just the the theme for itself is so haunting but what was really cool and especially in fire walk with me is how david lynch incorporates his music uh to whatever he's working on it could be his film but he incorporated that into his shows and so you have this incredible music that goes with it and these surreal like scenes of the of these singers because they have he keeps the actual singers in it um to perform and it just make it just makes a, it just makes such a, an incredible experience to watch so get definitely watch it um I'm trying to see where we're at here. I don't want to give away too much. It talks about what all the different characters are, but I'm looking for, hold on, uh, where, um, about Laura Palmer, hold on. Uh, oh, Piper Laurie. If you don't know who Piper Laurie is, Piper Laurie is in this. <laughs> Piper Laurie, Laurie from Karen. Karen, Carrie uh, is really, is really kind of, it's interesting to see in there. Joan Chen, um, let's see, ba -ba -ba. where is it? I was trying to find... They're probably, oh, they have everything. Um, oh no, I can't find it. Oh well, um, where was it? Um, okay, Ray Wise, Ashbrook, Shelley, no. Why can't I find? Hmm. Oh, Miguel Ferrar, I forgot Miguel Ferrar's in this too. Uh, first time I saw Miguel Ferrar, he was in Robocop. Um, he was the guy who actually created Robocop. Or at least got the funding behind it. Uh, he's in this too. Uh, oh, and what's so crazy too is season three. So, uh, you know, after 25 years, actors, actresses, they start to die, of course. You know, age is terrible for all of us. But I don't, but they have them. David Lynch, at some point, I don't know how he did it, but film scenes with them. So people you didn't expect to see um are in this movie are in this that season three um where is um let's see okay well this is basically the cast i thought it was what i was looking for but it's not um oh here you go this, it's so funny this this whole book is in black and white um all the pictures and stuff like that i never read this there was the secret diary of laura palmer i'm sure that's on audible uh but there was that as well and I never, I, I didn't, I didn't read it. Um, Cheryl and Finn, like everyone got really popular after this show, but it's just so funny how it crashed and burned so quickly because of that season two. Um, okay. Uh, the 10 best theories of who killed Laura Palmer. I don't, I'm not the Bella Lugosi theory. Oh, vampires. <laughs> um, okay. I'm not going to, you know, hold on. I, I want you guys to watch the show. I want you guys to watch the show. Um, because I don't want to reveal too much. I won't really. Oh, I have. Oh, wow. Daddy Love's got it. Um, so <laughs> watch this. If you haven't watched Twin Peaks, watch it. At least watch the first season. It's only eight episodes. You won't regret it. It's definitely worth checking out. Um, it still has a huge following. There are people that still go up to Washington to check out all these places. There's conventions. Um, it still has a pretty big following. And season three really was what everyone was waiting for. And honestly, I think there's more. There's probably still more coming. Um, so thank you once again for coming back to The Recovering Collector. Um, if you're not watching this live on you, on uh, on Twitch, head over to YouTube. Follow New Toy Robot on YouTube. All these shows, all these live shows uh, are recorded and will be are pretty much added the next day onto YouTube. Um, this is just, I, 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 I'm going to start watching the show again, I think, tonight. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, come back on Wednesday. I have a new Lego build for uh, a Lego brick in the wall. It's a Mustang. I'm going to make something that's not from Star Wars or Batman or anything comic or cartoon related. I'm going to build a real car out of Legos. So I'm going to be building a, Mon uh, a Mustang on uh, Wednesday. Uh, and then Friday, Just Draw the Damn Thing, a really fun game show where you get to draw along with us and then post it with the hashtag NTR Draws. And then as, as always on Mondays, come back to The Recovering Collector. Always something fun and exciting. I am Michael Jason Francis. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time.